I went to college, people are still getting jobs based on the college degree. It's funny now. I don't think we've looked at a college degree in years whenever we've interviewed. I don't even know if people put it on the resume. They probably do, but we don't look at it. Like we don't care what college you graduated from. Like we This is the Real Talk University Podcast, where your hosts, Andre and Christian, explore success stories outside of the classroom. Um, so my name is Andre. This is Christian sitting next to me. We're the hosts of Real Talk University, uh, and we're happy to have you on the show. So we're just going to get right into the questions. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. So for the audience out there that's not familiar with you, could you just kind of give us a brief overview of your background? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. My name is Neil Patel. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I run an ad agency called Neil Patel Digital. And I just help companies grow and get more traffic. Uh, I also blog at neilpatel.com. And I have a free tool that helps people grow their traffic. And it's called Uber Suggest. Awesome, awesome. So back to the blog post. I mean, what goes into like making an effective blog? I, it can't be easy. You know, what goes into making a successful blog these days isn't what it was years ago. Now it's more so unique content that's amazing. See, when I started blogging, there may have been 20, 30 million blogs. Now there's over a billion, you, if, especially if you include WordPress.com, Tumblr, Medium. So you're not going to get results unless you write something new and you just think of it this way. Whatever you're thinking about writing on, chances are someone's already written about it 10, 20 times, if not hundreds of times. So if you're going to write something, make sure you're writing something that's unique. Yeah, that so true. Yeah. There's just so many. It's just I feel like the barrier to entry to start a blog, like there, it, it's not exist anymore. So people could just write whatever they want, and that's why there's so like so much repetition of content. I totally agree. And like, yep. there's just too many blogs. <laughs> there's really rough, what, there's seven, seven and a half billion people. There's roughly one blog for every seven people. Just, yeah, that's crazy. That's <laughs> Yeah, like when you put it in that perspective, like, do we need more blogs? Not really. What we need is more unique content. Yeah, right, valuable right. content. So shifting gears here, I mean, valuable content can come from a mentor like we're going to go into right here. So what is the importance of surrounding yourself with mentors at an early age that can guide you down the right path and whatever you do? Yeah, it'll help you from stop making mistakes. So no matter what you try to do in life, you're going to make mistakes and that's okay. But if you can have someone guiding you, you'll make less of it. See, you, you look at people like me, I don't think A, I'm successful, but B, I'm not that smart. The only reason I've done well is, or I've done decent, not even well, but the reason I've done decent is I've made so many mistakes over and over again, eventually I learned what not to do. So all that was left was the stuff you should be doing and having mentorship will guide you so that way you make less mistakes over time. Absolutely. I feel like that's kind of why we do this podcast because we just talk to so many great people that can give us advice for where we decide to go in the future. Yeah. Makes so, sense. Yeah. So when did you kind of find your passion for marketing? Cause the big theme of this podcast is trying to find your passion. I found my passion just by trial and error. So I kept trying different things and eventually I figured out what I end up loving. And most people think, Oh, you're going to be born. You want to be a doctor or a lawyer or an astronaut and you find yourself not doing what you thought you wanted to do when you're a kid. And that's the majority of the people because what your dreams as a kid usually isn't what you want to do. And most people don't have that uh, in which they're like, Oh yeah, I want to be an astronaut. A lot of kids don't think that way. So when you grow up, the best way to figure out what you love and what you should be doing is just experiment, try different things out. You'll find what you're good at. And typically what you're naturally good at is what you'll find passion in. Right. So how did you kind of fall in love with the marketing industry, like what you're in today? So how did I find that I love it is what you're asking? Yeah. I, I started my own website. It was a job board. It failed. And one of the main reasons it failed because there's no traffic. So I had to learn how to get the traffic. Mm. So it was just kind of like a scenario thing. You just kind of solved the problem that you had and you ended up really enjoying it is what you're saying? And I was pretty decent at it. And right. it was challenging for me and I enjoyed it. So I just kept pushing at it. Right. So how did you become, I would say, an expert in your field of marketing? Like, did you take any course? Was it all self-taught? Did you have a mentor like we were discussing? Uh, 
I, I would talk to people, get advice. I would read a lot, go to conferences, a little bit of everything. You know, there wasn't necessarily one mentor, but by learning from a handful of people, reading, experimenting, conferences, all adds up. That's awesome. So uh, we're just going to go into a little unique question here. Like when, if you can recall a specific moment in your life, did you realize that you were an entrepreneur? Uh, there wasn't any specific moment. I got into entrepreneurship because I wanted money and I was too young to get a job. That's why I got started. Wrong reason, but that's why I got started. I, I can't hear you guys anymore. Oh, sorry. I was just muted. <laughs> so like, what, what age was that at? So probably around 16. That was when I really started searching for a job and I couldn't find it. So I created a job board. That's really cool. Really cool. Yeah. So when you started your first a job board, but that's why I did it. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That's interesting. So when you, when you started your first website and like, from what I understand, you really had no money for advertising. Like, did you come up with your a unique strategy on how to like effectively advertise, like kind of like bootstrapped or how did that kind of work? Uh, yeah, I, I just bootstrapped it. Try to find people who are, had really affordable fees. I worked at a theme park, picking up trash and cleaning restrooms. And eventually, you know, I saved up enough money to get some stuff done. Still didn't have enough because I got ripped off and I got no results by paying other marketing firms. So I had to learn it on my own and get good at it. Yeah. And I feel like the time you got into it, there wasn't really like a surplus of good advice and like forums that would teach you how to market successfully. So you were in a spot where you could kind of come up with your own unique strategies. And like you said, trial and error. So I feel like that was like probably definitely something that helped you a lot in your success. Yep. So another theme on our podcast is kind of what you can learn outside of the college classroom because we're college kids and we're kind of trying to give advice to more college audience. Like, What school are you guys going to? It's called Binghamton University. It's like in the middle of nowhere in <laughs> upstate New York. Not really the middle of nowhere, but just like <laughs> southern Close. tier, like away from New York City. So Like Albany or? I'm from Albany, but it's like southwest of Albany, near Pennsylvania, kind of. Cool. Yep. So are you happy that you took your sister's advice to go to college? No, it was a waste. No <laughs> offense to you guys. I know you guys. No, no, it's fine. Yeah, yeah that's, that's actually it. why we're doing this because we came to the realization that it might not be the best avenue for everyone. And we're just trying to add that extra. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying college is a waste. It's just, it was a waste for me. Definitely. It teach me shit. Right. Yeah. And, and how do you think like the importance of a college degree has changed? Like since the time you went to college and to the time like we're living in now. When I went to college, people are still getting jobs based on the college degree. It's funny now. I don't think we've looked at a college degree in years whenever we've interviewed. I don't even know if people put it on the resume. They probably do, but we don't look at it. Like, we don't care what college you graduated from. Like, we look for work experience, um, how smart you are, how, how quickly you can figure things out. And honestly, book smart, right? C smart, logical. Can you figure out problems? Are you creative? Like all those kinds of things. Right. Yeah, that's really interesting. Because a lot of people, like I know Elon Musk especially, like is coming out, they're saying that they're, they don't really require college degrees anymore, like for hiring people. So it's interesting kind of just having that insight to your hiring process as well, because it's, it's definitely changing from what it used to be. Yeah, you know, my best engineer, his name is John Butler. He's one of my business partners. He, I don't think he has a college degree yet. He's very talented. Right. Did you, when you were in college, were you taking business classes or were you trying to go for something else? I did computer science, business classes, and marketing. It was all useless. So you didn't <laughs> feel like the marketing classes helped you out at all? No. That's very funny. Yeah. I mean, it's common too, though. Like you hear this over and over and over again. So it's not, it's not surprising. Um, but yeah, again, that's why we're here. That's why we're doing this for people out there that aren't getting any value from their college classes. They could outsource and hopefully learn something from this interview today. Um, but if you, we're yeah. going to shift gears into kind of diving deeper into the failures that you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. So another common theme is obviously failure on our podcast. So what was it like to have initial success and then like lose money with a bad investment? 
it, it's life. It sucks, but what are you going to do? You lose and you move forward or you quit. And I decided to move forward because I had to pay back the money I lost. <laughs> yeah. Did you like feel any pressure or stress to like kind of try to go out there and succeed? Not necessarily pressure from anyone. It was more self-derived. I just wanted to be rich. Right, right. So I, if- I know that's like not a useful answer, <laughs> but dude, I was picking up trash and cleaning the toilets. I was willing to do whatever not to have to live a shit life. You know, yeah. like, and I knew getting that college degree wouldn't make me rich. Like when I was talking rich, I had a different viewpoint of rich back then, but I was like, oh my God, I want a million dollar house. Right. And I'm like, man, getting a job that pays 60 grand a year isn't going to help me with crap. Yeah, that's so true. Starting this podcast is what we realized is that everyone's kind of fighting for the same thing, which is to, you know, have a high GPA graduate with a good degree or good master's program and then go into the funnel of just getting a good job and working until you're 65 then retire so again it's something that didn't spark our interest yeah and you can't rely on social security or any of that stuff at your guys' age or even my age so it's like you got to figure it out for yourself no one's gonna help you out no one's gonna end up spoon feeding you money and solutions like you really got to figure it out yeah and the way to do that is just to be proactive about it like you said just going out and just realizing that, you know, you have to do whatever it takes to get to where you want to be. Yep. Definitely. So you like when you started your blog in 2006, did you have like an idea of what went into a successful blog and like, what was your motive behind it? Was it, what is, was it still like money based yeah. kind of? Yeah. So I had an ad agency at the time. I started the blog to generate leads. I needed leads for the business. And I couldn't afford paid advertising, so I went to the route of content marketing. Definitely. So what's the easiest way for college students to start a blog? And, and if you could, why do you think they should? Or I mean, like we kind of talked should, about it earlier. Yeah, they shouldn't start a text-based blog. They should go start a video blog. Just right. bust out your iPhone like I have, film, and put that shit on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and all the social networks. So if you had to Number say... Two form is, then do audio. Bust out your phone again, record into it. You don't have to have all the fancy gear that you do. That is a nice plus though. And upload that shit into iTunes or Libsyn. Like one or other. Video first, second is audio. Text, it's cool. You can do it. It doesn't get as good as results as used in the past because the market is saturated. Again, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but if you're going to start from scratch, start with video first. Definitely. And and if there was one platform that I like, you're most bullish on going into 2019. What would you say that is YouTube, YouTube or? by far YouTube. Okay, cool. Traffic YouTube, LinkedIn, you stop uploading the content. You stop getting the traffic. YouTube's the only one where you consistently get it. Even if you don't do shit. Gotcha. So what would you say goes into making like a, an effective YouTube video? Is it simply just coming out with unique content or? Is there a way to structure? No. See, with YouTube, there's not enough content out there because no one wants to create video content. There's a lady named Sunny something. She has something called a hot script, H-O-T script. Uh, you can find it on YouTube and it breaks on how to create an effective video. Awesome. We'll definitely. definitely drop that link in the show notes for people that are interested. So we're just going to kind of go back into your career a little bit. So I was just interested in what it was like starting your company Quick Sprout, like during the financial crisis. Like, did that make it a, like essentially harder to start or did that not really have an effect on what you were trying to do? The financial crisis didn't have too much of an impact for me because if you look at marketing technology or marketing and digital marketing specifically, Google made more money in the recession than they did previously. We helped companies manage their spend and we took a cut of all that kind of stuff. So we didn't see much of an effect during the downturn. Awesome. Awesome. So what company would you say has been the most fun working for thus far from your career? Of my own or other people's? Other Uh, people's. people's. None. I think they've all been good in (laughs) ways. There hasn't been one that's been better. I've enjoyed them all. See, I've had the privilege of consulting with a lot of brands, big and small. And when you see all these companies, you learn about new industries, what works, what doesn't, you can take a lot of different concepts and apply them to other businesses. And that's what I was doing. 
Um, but I found that to be very effective and, you know, it, it worked out really well for me and I did end up enjoying that. I still enjoy that to this day. Hence, I still do consulting. Consulting isn't a great money maker. Drives decent revenue, costs are high, uh, not a scalable business, but the cool part about consulting is you get to learn from everyone. Right. Yeah. And do you like take pride and fulfillment in seeing these companies succeed, like going on Google and seeing the strategies you gave to them and seeing them being implemented? I do. I, I really do love it and enjoy it. That's awesome. So what are like some of the biggest mistakes you see in marketing today? Uh, people just leveraging one channel. Now you have to go through an omni-channel approach. You used to be able to build a business off of one channel, like referrals or SEO or pay-per-click, but not anymore. It's too saturated. So, so obviously, yeah, there's so many different avenues you could take. Would you recommend starting out with one, getting really good at that, and then branching out? Or would you say expose Correct. yourself to everything in the beginning? No, start off with one, exp uh, do well on it, then expand. And you, you, a lot of people get stuck with that one channel that they do well on. They're like, oh, okay, I'm good. And like, not really. You, need a, you really have to expand and do more than that. Definitely. So what, what do you think the best way to branch out from that is kind of like directing your loyal following to different platforms simply maybe if it's on Instagram, like putting up stories or is there effective ways that you, you practice that? Uh, th there's no effective way. It's just you go out there and you try and you test and you tweak and you end up learning and you figure out what works and what doesn't and what you're good at and what not. I also look at marketing like spaghetti you know, when you're first starting off, <laughs> take like five tactics, 10 tactics, you throw them against the wall, whatever sticks, that's what you focus on first. Yeah. Kind of like trial and error, definitely. So obviously you're trying to appeal to the consumers in today's age. So what are some things that really catch the eye of the consumer? I'm not sure. I always do B2B. So I'm not too big on consumer trends. I should be, but I'm not. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, it makes sense. So, um, Obviously, we're a podcast. A lot of our listeners have podcasts. You have a really successful podcast. So what, what are some of the strategies that you've taken to grow your audience of listeners for podcasts? Uh, check out a tool called Uber Suggest. Type in keywords. See what's popular in your space. Start talking about subjects that are popular. You'll notice huge increase in viewership. That's, that's huge. That's huge. And that's, and that's the company that you kind of started, right? Uber Suggest. Yeah, and you can do it for free. It doesn't cost money. You just type in the keyword, you get results for free. So that's awesome, definitely. And then you just kind of utilize that with things like hashtags and SEO enhancements, stuff like that. Yeah, well, podcasts. A lot of it comes down to title, description. You know, putting in the keywords in there, um, and then it's just a numbers game, telling people to subscribe and follow. Because in that way, when people you keep releasing new stuff, they get notified. Definitely. So what's your take on the power of social media and the importance of building a brand in 2019? It, it, it is very important. Um, social media has been powerful for a long time and it'll keep rising and it is good for people to build a brand. People relate to personal brands more than corporate ones. So, How have you taken like any of the strategies you've learned with your business and applied them to social media growth? Uh, with social media, it's just testing and tweaking. So like I'll take some of the strategies such as, you know, with content marketing, content is king, put out a lot. So I try that with social media and be like, all right, let's see if it helps. Sometimes it helps. And then with some social networks, you notice that if you put too much content, you don't get enough engagement. It screws up your overall reach. So it's just testing and tweaking and experimenting. So which platforms would you say try not to put out like too much content? Like don't saturate too much. Facebook, uh, Instagram, Instagram stories, put out as much as you want. Uh, LinkedIn, you can put out a decent amount. Twitter, put as much as you want with Twitter for sure. Definitely. Awesome. Definitely. So what would you say to someone that's super passionate about growing a social media following, a podcast, a blog, whatever it is, and their viewership isn't where they want it to be? Would you say that they should focus on the numbers or focus more on the content and the numbers would come later? Uh, focus on the content and then the numbers will come later. Awesome. Awesome. So, and then just last question for me, then we're going to go into a lightning round. Uh, so what do you think the future of digital marketing kind of looks like? Maybe like to a gonna five, merged, 10 years. It's going to be merged with offline. You're going to start seeing ads on your 
tele uh, not television on your refrigerator being like you're out of this brand of milk you know click a button we'll order y brand of milk and you'll even get 10 percent off like you're going to start seeing marketing integrated everywhere through alexa yeah. and all these devices like everything yeah, would that's, you say that's like when, go ahead, when go you ahead. pass billboards you'll see a message that's just related to you while other people see messages related to them like wow. everything customized that's what I think. <laughs> that's crazy and yeah. do you think that's going to be like amazon kind of taking over that space or do you think that more companies will be able to grow and i think google will probably take over a lot of space because they already have the image uh the the buyer market so any company that creates a technology they'll probably try buying them yeah definitely so are you oh, another thing uh, interesting like alexa stuff like that um do you see that becoming something like really mainstream with just like the google home devices and, and it already alexa? is it already is like it is gonna be there people are gonna use it i don't care for it like using it on a daily basis i have it but people will eat that stuff up yeah especially just like little apps that you could kind of like go through morning routines or have it guide you to start the day and stuff like that i've heard is definitely something that people are using so we're just gonna go into the lightning round here it's just like four pretty quick questions and then uh, that'll be it for us today sounds good fire away Yep. So first, what would you tell your 18 year old self? Focus. I did too many businesses. I should have focused on one. I would have had a much higher net worth if I did that. Awesome. Two, what was your best purchase of a hundred ish dollars or less? Invest in yourself, education, whether it's an ebook, uh, a conference, there's a lot of stuff that you can buy for a hundred dollars that'll help you get smarter. Definitely. Do you, do you have like a favorite book? Uh, the Dip by Seth Godin tells you when to stick, when to quit. Yep, legend. All right, three. What was what would be a message that you would put on a billboard? Uh, I don't know if I'm trying to make money, but if I was just trying to help people out, I would tell people invest in yourself. A lot of people try to find new opportunities instead of just investing in themselves. Awesome. So true. All right. And then last, just where can people find you and contact you if they want to learn more or reach out to you? NeilPatel.com. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds that was good, great. Man. Perfect. We appreciate your time, Neil. Definitely learned a lot. Take care, everyone. Have a good Thank one. You. Thanks for having me.